But over the last few games, they've just been really trying to like go for the record for sure, and you, and that's kind of hurting the team. I mean, they just barely beat the Pacers the, um, last night. They lost. The Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 14th edition of the TV on Basketball Podcast with your host TV. Hope you're having a great day and thank you for clicking on to watch or listen to today's episode. All I want to say is I'm glad to be back, glad to be talking some NBA basketball here today. And man, I'm just excited to be back on the pod and just excited to, you know, just be part of this podcast again. It's been such a long time, been over a month, but I'm here, here to talk some basketball and it's going to be super, super fun today. But before we start this podcast episode today, I do have to plug my other platforms. Remember to follow at TV on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for updates on the podcast and for other great content. If you're on YouTube, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Plus, hit the notification bell so you will not miss an episode. That would be highly, highly appreciated. And for all my podcast listeners, remember to subscribe and leave a review if you're on Apple. As for my Spotify, Anchor, or Podbean listeners, just to continue to show, more, um, show your support in any way possible. That would be highly, highly appreciated. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Let me start over there. It's been a while. There's a lot to get into. What I was thinking about coming into this episode, what am I, how am I going to do this? It's been such a while. I don't want to recap like everything that's happened ever since I was gone because, like I said, it's been about a month. So in today's episode, what we're going to do is basically going to talk about each team in about a minute, a minute and a half, hopefully less for some teams. Just because we can get to the other teams, kind of get into the flow of things again, and then next starting next week, back to um, you know regularly scheduled programming. Going to be talking about you know the Twisted Smith Day games and stuff like that. Going back to like you know the weekly updates and all that good stuff. But for today, it's basically just me trying to catch up on everything, me trying to give my thoughts on each team, and you know we'll just try to go for there. Hopefully, I try to keep it short. Hopefully, I try to keep it under an hour. But there's just a lot to get into, and I want to get to each team. Trust me. But yeah. That's just how the episode's going to go. Again, thank you guys for all the support, especially on the TikTok, almost reaching 300 followers. I really appreciate all your support there. And if you if you haven't been checking it out, the daily NBA picks content between myself and the Who Talk podcast that's been happening, my daily NBA recaps. And yes, Game 7, I know it's been such a long time, but Game 6 of my team versus your team will be out very soon as well. But yeah, today's going to be an extra long episode. Um, not maybe extra long, like I said, trying to keep it under an hour, but we're going to try to get to each team. We're going to try to eat, get to your favorite team, so um, be on the lookout for that. Keep listening, and you can hear all my thoughts on each team. So the way we're going to do is we're going to be going by each division, starting with all the Eastern Conference divisions, and then going into the Western Conference, all that good stuff, and hopefully we can get through this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And I think the first division we're going to discuss is the Atlantic Division. Yes, let's start, let's start the Atlantic Division, the one I am most, um, you know, associated with because of the Toronto Raptors and all that. But we're not going to start with the Raptors. We're going to be starting with the um, Brooklyn Nets. And really, just in this season, the way the way I see the Brooklyn Nets is that as long as they have Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant's playing it right now in an MVP level, they will still be favorites out in the East. Them and the Bucks for me, are there in the top two. And even though without Kyrie Irving, you got KD who's playing at an all uh, at a, a playing like the best player in the world. You got James Harden who started off the season pretty slowly, but has started to pick it up. And then you got a good bench. Patty Mills been playing well. Lamarcus Aldridge has been absolutely fantastic for them ever since he came back out of retirement. You got Cam Thomas giving you some good minutes. Bruce Brown, Don J. Bembry, James Johnson. I can keep going on and on. Hopefully Kyrie Irving's gonna be back soon. There are a lot of reports saying that he will be back. Uh, there's some new optimism that he could be back for the season. But everything's looking good for the Brooklyn Nets. They they sometimes play up, play down to their competition. But either way, they still look great. And with Kevin Durant, they're going to be absolutely fantastic. The only bad news right now is that they have five guys in health and safety protocols. And Paul Millsap with Marcus Aldridge, Bembry, James Johnson, and I believe one more person um, against the Toronto Raptors tonight. But either way, they've been looking good. Um, and like, yeah, they're just looking at the contenders that we thought they were going to be. Katie's playing absolutely well. I'm, I'm playing absolutely fantastic. And there's a reason why they're number one in the East. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Brooklyn Nets. Let's move on to the next team. I'm telling you guys, we're going to keep this nice. We're going to keep this snappy. Next team I want to talk about is the Boston Celtics. And when you look at this team, Jason Tatum 
kind of like um, started off the season really slow, finally starting to find his groove once again. Jalen Brown finally came back from injury yesterday, and they did defeat the Milwaukee Bucks 117-103. to But when I look at this team, it's just kind of treading towards mediocrity once again. Al Horford has been their um, probably one of their better defenders on, on the team. Their depth is kind of questionable. They're getting, you know, good stuff from, you know, Robert Williams, Marcus Smart at times. Of course, Jalen Brown when he's there healthy. But the Celtics team is not showing me anything special. Right now, I believe they're sitting right at 500 right now. Yeah, 14 and 14. They, like I said, they just beat the, Celt- um, the, the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. But I just do not see this team making much noise. And they're still trying to find themselves. I think they do need to make some moves. Maybe this season going to the offseason. But right now, I'm not a huge believer in this team. Jason Tatum, I think, can still be that MVP level guy. But they're going to need to change the, the piece around him because it's not looking good. And I just I just see them kind of floating around 500 for a good chunk of, you know, a good chunk of the season. And I think that's what's really going to happen. So right now, the, the, the Boston Celtics, they're good. They're not great. And the fact that they're, like, kind of sitting in the conference right now at number... 10 at 500 kind of shows them compared to the rest of the competition in the East. Let's move. Let's keep it going. And let's talk about the New York Knicks. And the thing about the New York Knicks is when you look at the team last year, they, we knew them for the defensive identity. We saw them as like being led by Julius Randle on the offensive end. He was playing absolutely fantastic. And this year we haven't seen much of that. 23rd in offensive rating, 21st in defensive rating when they were basically top five all of last year. What's going on? What is happening? Julius Randle has not played like himself consistently throughout the season, only averaging 19 and 10. RJ Barrett has been kind of inconsistent. It doesn't help that he's been going through some injury issues. And of course, that whole situation where they had to bench Kemba Walker, that was not, um, that kind of showed um, what this team like saw itself as, that they just couldn't get enough like defensive um, help there. And Kemba Walker was definitely not helping that. He had like a horrible plus minus as well. And I think the biggest story with the Knicks is that their second unit is outperforming their first unit. You got Derrick Rose coming off the bench doing well quickly, Toppin, New Orleans Noel. That, like, next five lineup is outperforming the, the starters, and that can't happen. And that is the reason why they are a couple games under 500, where last year they were, like, one of the like one of the league's, like, you know, um, what's it called? Like, kind of season's favorites, in a sen- like, in a sense where you got a team here who has been bad for a couple of years, but they kind of shock a lot of guys. They became like kind of the internet darling um, last year, but they cannot live, at, live up to that this year. And there's a reason why, you know, they're under 500. They just have not been playing at the level that we thought we'd be seeing, or honestly, I think Thibodeau was hoping. It's unfortunate for them. They're last place in the Atlantic division right now. They still have time to turn it around, but I'm not that hopeful. Now let's move on to my team, the Toronto Raptors. And right now, they're sitting at 13-14. and 14. They absolutely destroyed the Sacramento Kings last night, mostly due to the Kings' effort because that was absolutely horrible. But the the Raptors, especially um, on this homestand, have, have looked pretty good. I think they're like 3-1, and 4-1 and one right now, so looking really good for them. And honestly, for a rebuilding team, they've looked great. I mean, they, not great, but I mean, they've looked good for a rebuilding team. Fred Van Vliet getting some good minutes there, playing absolutely fantastic. Scotty Barnes continuing his case for Rookie of the Year. I can't um, sing hi- um, highly his praises enough. Um, Siakam is finally starting to find his groove, which is good. Gary Trent Jr. is playing very well. And the bench is finally coming in together little by little. Utah coming back. Um, hopefully, Ken Burge coming back soon. It's been good. And I think, like like I said before, um, early on in the season, this is a rebuilding t- um, year for the Raptors. And the fact that they're like one game under 500, they're number 10 in the East, staying competitive with a lot of these teams, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good, and especially they have to deal with some injuries. OG has been out for a while due to a hip flexor. Um, but the fact that this team is slowly but surely coming together it makes me very hopeful as a Raptor fan. If you want to see more my uh, more thoughts on the Toronto Raptors, check out the Hoot Talk podcast's episode from last Friday. I went to fully in-depth on everything and anything Toronto Raptors, so go check that out. But honestly, so far this season, I'm satisfied. I think they've, um, for the type of roster they have and the kind of the amount of turnover they've had to go through, the fact that they're still competitive kind of shows the character of this team. And I think it's, uh, um, as a Raptor fan, very, very hopeful for the future. And they could possibly be a playing team for sure, so I'm hoping that that would be the case. Last but not least, here in the Atlantic Division, we're going to have to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. And I think the key for the 76ers is them trying to stay healthy. They've not looked horrible this season. Right now, they're sitting at f- um, 15 and 13, 6 in the East. 
but injuries have killed them. Joel Embiid had COVID-19 earlier in the season or was in health and safety protocols, which really kind of derailed the 76ers' hot start. They've got some good production out of people like Tyrese Maxey, who's kind of made the whole um, Ben Simmons situation more bearable, especially because he's averaging, like, what, 16 points a game, three assists, sorry, five assists, three rebounds. Tobias Harris has been okay. Seth Curry has had a pretty good season so far, averaging 16 as well. I think this is a good team and a possible maybe second-round team as well. The key for them is just to stay healthy. And B didn't play again yesterday against the Grizzlies, and you could tell that 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 they missed him a lot. I think they lost by like thirty something points. It was really really bad. But I think this is the the thing with the Seventy Sixers. Like basically, um, every single year, as long as they're healthy, they're gonna be one of kind of the top six teams in the East. Mix in with that. Hopefully, they can get a Ben Simmons deal soon because there are a lot of reports saying that um, the conversations have definitely ramped up, which is good news for Seventy Sixers fans. If they can get that done soon, have someone who's actually playing on the roster, that would be great for them. But as long as they stay healthy, I think they could finish in the top six teams at East. What are they doing? To, um, what they gonna do in playoffs? Um, and and um, soon after that, we'll have to wait and see. But right now, they've looked good. Um, Andre Drummond has actually been solid for them off the bench as well. That's something to note. Um, as long as Embiid's in the lineup, I think they they can stay uh, with a top 10 offense. The defense definitely needs some work, but I think they'll think that they are a solid team out in the East. Uh, potential first round, t- second round team as well. So yeah, that is the Atlantic Division. Let us move on to the next division, which is the Central Division. And we're going to be starting off with the defending champions, Milwaukee Bucks. And when I look at this Milwaukee Bucks team, I don't know why. I just feel like they're cruising. And I think that comes with the fact that they've won a championship already. Um, obviously, early on in the season, they had a lot of troubles with injuries and stuff, for sure. But good thing is they brought back um, Drew Holiday um, from injury. Chris Middleton's back from injury, but sadly, yesterday, he um, he hyperextended his right knee, so hopefully it's nothing too serious. Giannis has been playing at a near MVP level as well, so you got to... Um, think um you, you gotta you know acknowledge him for that but the only thing really concerning me about this milwaukee bucks team is kind of how long this brooke lopez injury is being sustained for there's not many updates we don't know any sort of timeline right now for brooke lopez and although i don't think it's going to affect them much in the regular season he's going to be absolutely key if they want to make another championship level run um just because he is a good like you know secondary defender as well he's like really evolved into that into his role but in the regular season, as long as um, they're getting him right and making sure he's ready for the playoffs, I think the Bucks will be fine. They look more loose. They feel rest, less pressured. And honestly, they're just a fun team to watch. As Giannis, Giannis is there, Drew Holiday playing at a high level, and hopefully Chris Milton doesn't miss him on time. They should still finish like top four in the East, probably top three or top two at the end of the season. They've looked good. And I'm excited to see this team going to another like playoff run, and hopefully we could see an Easter Conference Finals matchup between them and the Brooklyn Nets, which would be... You know, absolutely fantastic. So, good on the Milwaukee Bucks. Next team in the Central Division that we're going to be talking about is the Chicago Bulls. And the Chicago Bulls, I mean, when I look at this team, and I talk about this with Jalen from the um, with the Hoop Talk podcast, they are a very good team, and they have been proving that all season long. But after a while, you kind of have to acknowledge them and like what type of level they are like compared to the rest of the East. And for me, they're a Tier 2 team in the East. They've proved that to me through 27 games. Um, they've played up a very good um, so far this season, led by DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, who are both having all-star level seasons, both potentially making the all-star starters, which would be absolutely fantastic for the Bulls. They've been playing absolutely fantastic, and as a Toronto Raptor fan, as DeMar DeRozan being my be- my favorite player of all time, seeing him play some of the best battles of his career just makes me happy, and seeing like him basically take over fourth quarters time and time again has been absolutely great to see. And honestly, I'm, I've am i been watching a lot of Bulls games just because of DeMar DeRozan, and that is absolutely great to see. But the thing about the Chicago Bulls, and especially as of late, they have been hit hard by the health and safety protocols um, from the NBA. At the moment, they have 10 guys in health and safety protocols. Some of the guys who are not in there right now are like Lonzo, Alex Caruso, and Nikola Vucevic. But it got so bad to the point where the NBA has canceled the games for tonight and also on Thursday. So hopefully some of the guys can come back soon and they can get back to playing. But, man, they've just been absolutely, like, um, absolutely just, like, dreaded with these um, health and safety protocols, which is absolutely unfortunate. The only thing I think that the Bulls have to look um, on going forward is maybe trying to get a better backup big man um, compared to Tony Bradley. But besides that, they're a very good team. 
I like some of the bench pieces and people like Io Desom- um, Dosomu and Derek Jones Jr., who's been playing well at a big man position. I think they're going to be a good team, and they should not be slept on whatsoever going into the playoffs. So if they can continue this form, I think they can make a semi-deep run and, um, you know, kind of prove a lot of like people from before the season wrong that they're going to kind of be in the lower half of the East. I think they're a good team. Just try to get healthy. Um, they're such a fun team to watch, honestly. Another team who has surpassed expectations is the Cleveland Cavaliers, who we're going to be discussing next. And when I look at this Cleveland Cavaliers team, is that they started off the season very, very strongly like they did last season. But when I looked at this team, and, and especially after Colin Sexton got injured, I was going to be like, okay, it's another one of those seasons where they start off strong, something bad happens, and then they're kind of going to be kind of slowly dropping down the standings. But that doesn't that hasn't been the case whatsoever for this team. Right now they said fourth place at a 17 and 12 record, which is very, very surprising. And more than that, that three big men lineup with Mobley, Jared Allen, and Markinen, it's working. And it's working really well. And it's leading to a number three team in defense. They have an um they have the number three defensive rating. Darius Garland has proven me wrong. I thought that this guy could be a potential bust. He's been playing absolutely fantastic for them at the point guard position, getting some help from Ricky Rubio. Off the bench, Kevin Love has been playing pretty well as well. And I am convinced that this team is this is not just a flash in the pan type of moment for the Cavs. This is a legit team. It's going to be extremely hard to score on them, even if they make the play-in or, um, or playoffs. You just don't want to go against this team because whenever you attack the paint, you're either going to be met with an Evan Mobley, who has definitely surpassed like even expectations I had before the season. Jared Allen, who's playing at the near all-star level. It's this team is going to be hella annoying to play against, and they've proven me and a lot of people wrong about how good they are as a team, and that's absolutely fantastic. I think that Evan Moby can develop into a generational type player. That's how I see his potential going. And this cap team, man, I mean, people can continue to sleep on them all they want. This team continues to play at a high, high level, continues to beat, um, beat teams comfortably at times as well. This is a good team, and I think that we should be on the lookout for them all season long. I don't think they, it's it's gonna be. I don't see them like even like falling off that much for sure. This team is a good team, and we need to put some respect on their name. Now let's move on to the next team in the Central Division, and a team that has been in the news a lot recently, the Indiana Pacers. Now, kind of like the Magic in the last couple of years, I look at the Pacers and see a mediocre team s- settling for the last couple of years around the four to, four to ten range, and they really couldn't like build themselves out of that, you know. They are a four to ten range team, but they just couldn't like you know break through the barrier. And now that they're like one of the lowest teams in terms of attendance, um, they've announced that they were going to be like in kind of in rebuild mode, looking to trade players such as Miles Turner, Demontis Sabonis, and Karis Levert. Now, hopefully, in a future episode, we can look into potential trades, especially when those um, trade rumors start to heat up even more after the um, the, the date of December fifteenth. But looking at the team right now, they look better as of late. Um, they lost in pretty sad fashion to the Warriors yesterday. They couldn't get the offensive rebound, and Kevon Looney threw up some some odd shot, but it still went in. And then that Karis LeVert drive that looked super ugly, and they couldn't even get the win there. This Pacers team is good. I think they have a lot, like about nine to ten guys that could be on any NBA roster, but they just do not have that superstar type level player. I think the owner realizes that Kevin Pritchard has been asking that for a rebuild for over the last f- few years, and now that's finally going to happen. Um, where would these guys go? I'm not sure, but I think they can get some decent return for an all-star level player in Sabonis, a player like Miles Turner who can fit on basically any team in the league, and Karis LeVert. I know a team is going to take a want to take a chance on him. So, yeah, I'm glad that they're rebuilding. Um, it's good that they they play. The guys are playing well to up their trade value, but as long as they're going to keep this lineup, they're going to be mediocre. Hopefully, um, we get to see some trades soon. Just so we have some content to talk about for sure. Last team in the in the center division we're going to be discussing is the Detroit Pistons, and all I got about to say this about this team is that they're just not a good team. They are just not a good team. Currently, they're on a 12 game losing streak. Um, Jeremy Grant looks like he's uh, has a some torn ligaments in his right thumb, so he's going to miss up basically until the end of January, maybe early February. It's I don't want to go too much deep into this team because this team is just not good. Um, Kate Cunningham started off the season slow, but he's finally starting to pick it up. Um, averaging right now 15 points a game, four rebound, um, f- um, five assists, six rebounds. There's some good players on this team, and I think that they can. Um, there's some good building blocks here, but it's just not a good team in general. Um, Cade, hopefully he can go like through his rough patches and continue to develop as the season goes on. 
But if they get a top draft pick, good thing is this is a big man heavy draft pick, which the Pistons do need. Possibly getting someone like a Chet Holgram. Possibly getting someone like a Paolo Banchero. Someone like that could really help this team. And, you know, as for the Pistons fans, just continue to tank. And hopefully you can get another top pick in this year's draft. So not much to say about the Pistons. They're not a good team. They just have to continue to tank and hopefully get another high pick next um, in the next draft. That is the Central Division done, and we got one more division to go through out here in the East, which is the Southeast Division. And we're going to be starting off with the Miami Heat. Now, before the season, when I was previewing each of these NBA teams, I said that the Miami Heat team is built for the playoffs. you got people like Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, who have finals experience, Kyle Lowry, a championship caliber point guard. you got Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero. They are very, very top-heavy, and I think when the playoffs come around and you have to like rely on basically seven, eight guys, um, especially like deep into the playoffs, you the Miami Heat got that. They're good. My question for them was in the regular season, how is the depth going to go? Because once you go past those seven, eight guys, you start to get into the Max Juices of the world, the Gabe Vincents, you got the Casey Paulus and stuff like that. It just, it just doesn't look great. Now that Bam's gonna be out a couple months, now that Jimmy has been kind of um has is gonna be out, I know he's mourning the loss of his friend Demar um Demarius Thomas as well, so I don't know if that is contributing to that. But they're just not a deep team, and you can just tell looking at the lineups right now, they still have Hero, they still got Larry, still got Robinson. But now they're starting like a Dwayne Deadman, they're giving a lot of minutes to like Gabe Vince and stuff like that. This is my issue with them coming to the regular season. How is the depth gonna hold up? And right now, it's hard for them to score, it's hard for them to we always string together a couple wins, hoping Jimmy comes back because when he's been playing, he's looked at um looked like an MVP candidate for sure. But the but the question for them, but the concern for them is just trying to stay healthy, trying to stay in the top six range so they don't have to go to the play in. I think they still have a good chance of doing so, but they need Jimmy Butler back in the lineup 100. percent But I still think they're going to be contenders if they're fully healthy going into the playoffs. We just have to see if they're going to be able to hold it up until then. Next team I want to talk about here in the, in the Southeast Division is another team in Florida. We're going to be talking about the Orlando Magic. And same thing with them in the Detroit Pistons. They're tanking. Right now, they're 14th in the East with a 5-23 and record on a five-game losing streak. We see some like good things coming from this team. Cole Anthony has looked absolutely fantastic this year, averaging 20 points a game. You, um, their, their rookie, Franz Wagner, has been their second leading scorer, scoring 14 points a game, four rebounds. He is looking like to be a very nice piece for them going forward. Sadly, we don't get to see much of Jalen Suggs, especially because he is, um, has a thumb injury at the moment as well. They just have to continue tanking. That's the thing with this Orlando Magic team. They just have to continue to tank and hopefully, you know, again, mentioning Paolo Vanchero, Chet Holgram, hoping that one of those guys fall into the draft, even though they have kind of that huge cut at the big man position. I think they, this team has definitely shown some sort of promise. Wendell Carter has looked good, um, averaging 13 and 10. Um, Mo Bamba is showing uh, um, kind of a better version of himself as well, which is good to see. There's just not much to say about this team. They just have to continue their development phase. Hopefully, Marco Fultz comes back soon. This team is rebuilding. They're doing a good job at trying to tank the season away too. So, yeah, not much to say about the Orlando Magic. Next team I want to talk about is the Charlotte Hornets. Right now, sitting at a 15 and 13 record, um, number eight in the, um, sorry, 15 and 14 record, number eight in the East. And just like the Chicago Bulls, this team has been ravaged by COVID um, 19 protocols. Terry Rozier, Mason Plumley, who was one of their only centers, Lamelo Ball. Their backward has been demolished because of these um, health and safety protocols. But at the same time, they're still having a solid season. And one of the people I do want to discuss um, for how great the season has, uh, for a reason for their um, very hot start and very good start to the season, Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges is definitely making a case for um, for most improved player, averaging this season um, basically nine, um, 20 points a game and 7 rebounds, definitely improving as a 3-point shooter as well. He's been playing good. Lamelo has been playing fantastic as well in the second season. And I think if they're fully healthy and with the current roster they have right now, they could potentially be a first round upset. They can like provide one of those like first round upsets for sure. The one thing I do want to see them make a change with is upgrading that center position. Mason Plumlee is fine. He's fine, but not as a starting center. And especially when you don't have much depth, when behind him you have like a Nick Richards, a Kai Jones, stuff like that. You need some more depth, especially if you want to have a semi the playoff run. And I'm telling you, Hornets, Miles Turner is available. If I'm the Hornets, I'm doing whatever 
they can to try and get him into onto that team. Have him on that team, and I think this team can move up another level. Upgrading that center position can do that, and I think that um, that's something they should definitely look into. Either way, this team is a good playoff team, but potentially another another playing season for them, but they look good. They look good, and I think that this is going to be a fun team to watch throughout the season. Obviously, with the commentators, especially with Lomelo, this team is definitely going to be a good team going forward. Next team I want to talk about is kind of a team that's like very confusing so far early on in the season, and that's the Atlanta Hawks. Right now, they're sitting at 13-13, and 13, um, at 11th in the East. Sorry, 13-14, and 14, 11th in the East. In the East. And of course, last year they made it to the um, to the Eastern Conference Finals. They took the Milwaukee Bucks to six games, and so far this season they just haven't looked at their best. I mean, Trey Young is playing at a very very high level, averaging twenty seven nine and four. Good production coming from John Collins and stuff like that. But Clint Capella is taking a step back. Bogdanovich hasn't really played to his um, capabilities, and they're still dealing with some injuries with DeAndre Hunter, who's been out the lineup. I think that this is going to be a good team, and I think there's still time for them to turn the season around. But the fact that they, like, coming off, like, um, last season, Trey Young said early in the season that they got, kind of got bored, which is not kind of something you want to hear. They have, they've still been good offensively. I don't want to take anything away from them. They're, like, a top four, top five, even top three team on the offensive end. The defense is kind of concerning, though. Bottom five in the league. There's still things they could change here and there. But maybe a possible trade where they could trade like a few of their bench pieces for maybe even a better piece as well. They have a lot of depth. Maybe they could trade some of that depth to upgrade someone in their starting lineup. We'll have to wait and see for that. But this team, not off to a great start, but I still think there's time to turn this season around. Trey Young is playing at a high level, which is always great. Let's see if they're going to be able to switch things up um, going into like further on to the season. Last but not least for the team in the East, we have to talk about the Washington Wizards, currently 7th in the East, 15th and 13th record. And if you guys remember early on the season, the Wizards were off to a very, very hot start. They've looked absolutely fantastic. They were looking absolutely fantastic. Kyle Kuzma hitting clutch shots. You got Spencer Dinwiddie off to um, playing very well. Montrez Harrell looking like an, another six-man of the year sort of season for him. And they kind of dropped off dramatically, 4-6 and six in the last 10 games. They were number one in the East at some point, maybe I think two or three weeks ago, and now they're number seven. I think they're now playing towards their expectations. I think they could still possibly be a playing team, but at the same time, this team is just good, not great, average at best. This team, like, um, you could tell like with their sustain, with with um how far we are into the season, that there are a lot of teams that could pace, that are probably going to overtake him. Possibly the Celtics, looking like the Hawks will at some point. This team is just not that great, and I think hampering their expectations um, now, seeing how they are right now, is kind of how we expected them going into the season for sure. When will we see will we see a Bradley Beal trade this, off this season? I don't think so, but this is definitely something that they should really look into going into next season. But yeah, will they be a playing team? Maybe, but at the same time, do not get your high hopes for the Washington Wizards. Now we got the East done. Let me know what you guys think of the, um, of those down below. We are moving on now into the West, and we're going to be starting with the Northwest Division. First thing we're going to be discussing is the Utah Jazz, and we don't have to go too much into Utah Jazz because it's literally the same old story. One of the top teams in the West right now, they're 19-7, and seven, third um, place, and they're playing well on the defensive end, as they always do. They're right now top five. They have the best offense in the league, which is um, they're usually up there season in season out but none of that matters <laughs> none of that matters because we are still waiting to see what they could do come playoff time they always go in the regular season but when the playoffs come around that's when the eyes will be on them saying is this actually is this finally going to change um or not i still think gobert is uh, um, very overhated he's having another defensive player of the year type season if you watch the games he is he's absolutely a joy to watch in the defensive end and same thing, like every single season, no one talks about how good Donovan Mitchell is enough. He is a, fantastic, a, potential, a potential superstar type player, can be a possible, you know, top 10 player in the future. But I think with this season, I think this is what a lot of Jazz fans are hoping for, is they kind of have that Bucks arc, kind of like from last year. Same thing with the Bucks last year, another great season, but people were waiting for what they're going to do in the playoffs, and they finally delivered, gained that championship to Milwaukee. Utah is kind of on the same mark because they're kind of the Milwaukee Bucks of the West, continuously being a top seed in the playoffs, but uh, in in the season, but never really delivering in the playoffs. I think this season could possibly be that time for the Utah Jazz. We're gonna have to wait and see, but 
um, yeah, same thing with me and a lot of other fans. Whatever they do in the regular season, honestly, is not going to matter too much. It's just what we see in the playoffs, and if anything, it's going to change. They're going to finish top three in the West. They're still a very good team. We just have to wait till the playoffs. Next team I want to talk about in the Northwest Division is the Denver Nuggets. And, man, this team has been ravaged with injuries. Not even health and safety protocols. Not even that. Injuries. Michael Porter Jr., out for a season with a back injury. Torn ACL for P.J. Dozier and Jamal Murray. It's probably not going to be back till late March, early April. But the thing about the Denver Nuggets is that no matter what, if you have Nikola Jokic, the um, reigning league MVP, you got a chance. And that's what is happening again here. Even playing better than he has last year, he's averaging 26 points a game, almost 14 rebounds and 7 assists. He's having another MVP caliber season. And he's doing this with players like um, Bones Highland getting a lot of minutes, Zeke Naji getting a lot of minutes, Monty Morris moving into the starting lineup. I mean... A lot of changes have to be made into this Denver Nuggets rotation. And right now, they're 14th and 13th, 8th in the West. A lot of teams would have folded by now, and it's like, it would have looked a lot worse. But Nicole Jokic is great, man. Just keep watching Nuggets games. It's such a joy to watch him play, especially yesterday. He had like 29, 19, like 28, 19, and 7. Or sorry, 28, 19, and 9. He's just a fun player to watch. And as long as he's there, he'll make that team must watch. And... He'll, he'll keep that team competitive. They shouldn't be as competitive as they are right now, but they are. It's because of Nikola Jokic. So kudos to them. Let's see how far they can make us with Nikola Jokic playing that well. But honestly, he's just so good. Clearly the top, the best center in the league for me. And I'm going to stick by that 100%. Next thing I want to talk about is the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they had a hot start to the season as well. They've looked really good. We thought things were going to change heavily. But over the last, like, you know, five to ten games, they kind of looked like their old selves again. They definitely look better still. Cat having a good season, averaging 24 and 9. Anthony Average averaging 21 points a game as well. D'Angelo Russell went healthy, playing solid. But, man, they just cannot sustain, like, any sort of good play for a long period of time. Um, bottom 10 defense, when you have Carl Anthony Towns, Edwards, and D'Angelo Russell, is very concerning. They're doing better on the defensive end, but still, 12 and 15, hasn't looked great. And you could tell, even in their last game, Carl Anthony Towns in their press conference just looked absolutely defeated. He says, I'm tired of losing. They're calling out the Utah Jazz for not being that much of a scary defense, even though they got beat up by them from 30+. plus. Patrick Beverly has definitely helped them there, but man, it's just it could be a lot better for the Timberwolves. It should be a lot better with the amount of talent on their roster, but it just hasn't. And I think that's just a Minnesota Timberwolves way. I think sooner rather than later, we're going to see a cat trade maybe in the offseason, maybe next year. But, man, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of talent on this team, but you just expect them to be better, and they just haven't um, been that this year. So, yeah, unfortunate for them, and just not really high on that team whatsoever. Next team I want to talk about is the Oklahoma City Thunder. And the Oklahoma City Thunder, same thing as kind of last year. They are a competitive team. They are a competitive bunch. Yes, they have one of the worst offense. They have the, best, the worst offense in the league by far, but top 20 in defense. They're competitive. They're a competitive team. Shea Gildas Alexander having another all-star level season. Lou Dort improving um, a lot on the offensive end. And even their first round pick and Josh Giddy has shown a lot of potential, which is good to see from this Oklahoma City Thunder team. I think they're going to still be near the bottom of the West. I still think they're going to be maybe like high up in the lottery for sure. But sooner rather than later, Sam Presti, you have a bunch of draft capital. You don't want to be in the same position that the Celtics are in right now where they had so much draft capital and instead of um, converting those into, you know, star level players, keep throwing dartboards. Do not be doing that. You have some good players. You have a bunch of draft picks. Hopefully you get another star piece to add to this um, after this season. But with those other draft picks, package them. Get some really good players to help out this team. I think they have the potential to do that. I think that they need to just make some significant changes in the next two, year or two so that they can actually be competitive and actually show their fans that they that this tanking is going to be worth it eventually. Trusting the process is good, but you have to convert those into wins eventually. I think this can happen in the next couple of seasons. I just think that they just have to go through it another year. If they don't make moves in the next one or two years, I would definitely be concerned. But right now, I'm okay with them being like one of the worst teams in the league. It's just unfortunate that they lost to 73 points, which is completely unacceptable, but... I still think that this team has a bright future. They have some good pieces there. Let's see how they're going to do moving forward. Last team in the Northwest Division I want to talk about is the Portland Trailblazers. And kind of like the um, the, pace, um, like the Pacers, they should be making a lot of moves. They should be. Demi Lord has expressed his, um, 
his desire to want to come back and play um continue playing he's asking for a two-year 100 million dollar contract which sounds absolutely ridiculous but that's kind of the state we are in right now he finally got rid of nil o'shea and hopefully that means that a lot of changes are going to happen um chauncey both has been calling out this team constantly throughout the season which is means that him and the players are not on the same page they need to trade people like cj mccollum get some dif um, different defensive pieces back hopefully ben simmons is still on the table for them but I want to like I know Lillard's not listening to this, of course, but at some point, Damian Lillard. I mean, I know he lost Portland. I know he wants to do it here, but at some point, they're gonna have to let go, right? The pay, the Trailblazers have been kind of middle of the pack. Some they've made it to the conference finals once in his tenure there. He's a top seventy five player for a reason. We need to see him competing. I want to see him competing at some point, and he hasn't really like done that with the Trailblazers. I know he wants to get it done there, but. At some point, we want to see like Willard on a championship level team, and we haven't seen that yet. Hopefully, some maybe uh, the Trailblazers can do something soon and help him get um, better pieces to get to that point. But let's be honest; it's more than likely not going to happen in Trailblazer and Trailblazer country. Damian Lord, maybe like leaving is the best option. That is the Northwest Division done. Let's move on to the next division in the West, and we're going to be talking about the Pacific Division. And I'm going to be starting off strong with this first team. We're going to we're going to start off with the Los Angeles Lakers, who are currently number six in the West, 15 and 13 record. And honestly, looking at this team and how they've been playing this year, one of the biggest de um, determining factors for them winning games is how healthy they're going to be. Anthony Davis, we know what's going to happen with Anthony Davis in and out of the lineup all the time. LeBron has had to deal with some. Um, issues as well, especially in his abdomen um, section, as um, and his uh, had to deal with some abdomen injuries. But when I look at this team, it's kind of like what I was like fearful for um, before the season. They have some good names, they have some good players, but met them meshing together has just not worked out so far. Westbrook averaging 19 points, eight rebounds, seven um, sorry, eight rebounds, eight assists. He's looked solid, especially over the last few games. But the fit with him, LeBron, and AD. Uh, what's questionable before the season and those like questions we had before the season they're like are or at least those concerns are kind of like showing up in the um so far this season and you could tell because like um with the way that like the lineups are trying to do they're trying to make sure that westbrook sometimes is like there by himself to kind of like get the most out of him and i think the lakers see this too because there's been reports especially recently that they're looking to packages um for russell westbrook and that kind of just shows that yeah we thought this is going to work it just hasn't worked out so far we need someone that could better fit this team. But even like Russell Westbrook, although he hasn't fit well with them, he's still doing his best. I'm not going to fault him too much. One person I do want to like criticize is Anthony Davis. Um, so far this season, averaging 24 and 10. Looks great and all, but if you watch the games, he just does not look like the Anthony Davis that we, we've seen in years past. He's averaging under 20% from three, which is really weird. Um, less than 73% at the free throw line, 52% from the field. This is not the Anthony Davis we're used to seeing, and he just isn't putting in much effort. It just feels like he's just not fully into the game. And he doesn't like look like he's taking over the number one spot. By now, I was hoping that he would be taking that, you know, that crown from LeBron being the number one guy there in LA. And he hasn't done that yet, which honestly kind of disappointing. I think that they also like play to the level of the competition. If they face bad teams, they kind of play poorly. When they play the good teams, that's when they're playing at their A game. They need to like kind of have a consistent effort throughout the entire season, especially if they want to have like home court advantage at least in the first round. But this team, like, there's not. It's like kind of like how we've been saying even like before I went on that like little hiatus in the podcast. It's I feel the same way about the Lakers. It's just now I'm like more disappointing in AD more than anything. Hopefully things can change for them. If they stay healthy, I still think they can finish top four in the West. But as of right now. I don't even have them in that NBA contenders bubble, man. Just the way that their team fits um, together, I don't. I know LeBron is still great and all that, but I don't treat them as like one of those like top tier teams in the league right now. I just don't. Next team I want to talk about is a team that I have criticized heavily over the last few years, and that is the Sacramento Kings. The one thing that they've done this season is they finally fired Luke Walton. Yes, that's my only praise I'm gonna have about them. The rest, let's let's go on a little rant here. They're hot garbage. This team is hot garbage. Last night against the Toronto Raptors, um, the Raptors played good. I'm not going to say they played bad, obviously not. But the Kings just played absolutely horrible. They played absolutely horrible. Even after the Luke Walton, you know, they, there's usually that, like, new coach. But I'm like, okay, 
new change, new system, new voice. Let's see if we can get some wins. Nothing. Nothing from the um, Kings. They lost three straight games in a row. De'Aaron Fox started off slow, but he's slowly getting back to that um, form from last year. But this team is just not good. This team is just not good. And honestly, going into like the next few years, like the only two people I see that are absolutely valuable to this team is De'Aaron Fox and Talis Tal Tal Halliburton. The other guys, they can all go. They need to make some changes because this this organization, the way that they've not made the playoffs over the last 16 years, the way that they haven't like like kind of broken out even like once, like they like they're not even really that close to like a play-in spot in my opinion. Absolutely disappointing. Just absolutely disappointing this team. They need to make changes soon. And honestly, can we just, just move this team to Seattle? Like the fourth team in Cali, they're complete, a complete afterthought. Just just not impressed with this team at all. Same thing every year, just not impressed. Next team I, I am impressed with is the Los Angeles Clippers. Even without Kawhi Leonard, this team is still highly, highly competitive. Paul George went off to a hot, hot start um, playing at an MVPG level. Kind of slowed down since then, but the other Clippers have finally stepped up. Reggie Jackson's having a good season, averaging almost 18 points a game. Getting good protection from Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard, Terrence Mann. And then also getting like okay protection from people like Isaiah Hartenstein, Brandon Boston, who had 27 points the other day. This team is good. They're heavily, they're very well coached. Tyron Lue, one of the best coaches in the league. But this team will only go as far as Kawhi will take them. And with no Kawhi on the court, this team for me is a first-round exit. This team is. And Paul George can play an MVPG level for sure. And I think they can, they've can shown that they can still play at a high level against like top teams like the Utah Jazz compared to like, like last year. But I don't know. Um, with this team, they're still going to be like highly um, well-coached. Paul George is your number one guy. Can They could possibly get you to a second round, but that's about it. That's as far as I'm willing to um, see with this team. Hopefully Kawhi does come back, though. He's been participating in, in workouts and stuff like that, which is great. But we're going to have to see. Um, this team is going to be a tough out no matter what. Every single night they're going to um, give effort. But they're just like they're just not going to go far. And if, as long as Kawhi's not playing, they're not a contender. Next team who I do consider a contender, though, is the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns, they were made to the fi they were an NBA finalist last year. And this year they had it looked like they were having some sort of like hangover from the finals because they started off one and three. But ever since then, they broke up an 18 game winning streak. They lost, they did lose two out of the three last games, but that is mostly because Devin Booker hasn't been playing because of injury, and DeAndre um, Aiden has an illness which is not COVID related. But man, this team is just a solid team across the board. Chris Paul is still playing at a, an elite point guard level. They are top three in defense and in offense. This team is just a good team up and down the roster. You got players like JaVale McGee um, producing off the bench. Campaign, they signed him to an extension. They got Kaminsky playing pretty well. Um, Cam Johnson, um, Shamit, Crowder. This is just a really deep team who knows their role both on the offensive and defensive end. Devin Booker taking that next step. Maybe potentially being a top 10 player soon. Just because of the way he is playing, especially like before the injury, and DeAndre Ayton is continuing to excel in his role, averaging 16 points a game and 11 rebounds. This is a very good team, and I think they're proving this year that that last year was just not a fluke. This is still a very, very elite team, and I could definitely see them like competing for a um, Western Conference final spot again, potentially a final spot if things go their way. This is a very good team, and I think people need to put respect on their name. Next team I want to talk about is the Golden State Warriors, the last team in the Pacific Division. The Golden State Warriors are elite. <laughs> this team is an elite team, and this is still without James Wiseman or Klay Thompson. They still look like title contenders. The thing about the Warriors as of late is that <laughs> the Steph Curry record, um, him um, breaking Ray Allen's record, he is two away at the very moment, and he's more than likely going to break it tonight in MSG against the New York Knicks. But over the last few games, they've just been really trying to like go for the record for sure, and you and that's kind of hurting the team. I mean, they just barely beat the Pacers the um, last night. They lost to the, the Sixers on the other night, and Curry admitted it. Um, the record put a lot of pressure on him, and that's why the Warriors haven't been performing as well. I think once that record is broken, the way it's put off their back, and they're going to continue to play at a very high level. I mean, they're number one in the in the West right now at a twenty two and five record, just getting great production up and down the roster. Curry playing at an MVP level. Wiggins playing fantastic. Jordan Poole playing fantastic. Draymond's probably going to be Defensive Player of the Year the way he is playing. 
And Clay's coming back soon, guys. Wiseman's going to come back soon. And this team is going to continue to play at an extremely, extremely high level. This is a very fun team to watch. Love watching this team. And I know, uh, like a lot of you guys, I'm going to be watching Curry break the record tonight. I mean, if he doesn't hit two threes, man, <laughs> it's Steph freaking Curry. He's definitely going to do it tonight. Cannot wait to see that happen. That is the last of the Pacific Division. And we have one more division to go through, which is the Southwest Division. And we're going to be starting off with the Memphis Grizzlies. And right now, they sit number four in the West at the moment. Um, where they 16 and so a 17 and 11 record, and they're doing a lot of damage without John ja Morant. And the thing early on the season is like, look, Jaw for MIP. I'm still gonna be shouting that to the heavens. Jaw for MIP is still gonna happen. But ever since John ja Morant got injured, we were worried about their offense and they're they're gonna slip down in the standings. But what they figured out is they found a defensive identity from the last couple of years. Early on in the season, they were dead last for a good chunk of it, which is like the four or five weeks. But after since John Morant got injured, they knew that they had to have some sort of defensive like help if they were able to get some games. And man, they've been doing that to the highest level. I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. started off the season slow, has definitely picked it up, averaging 16 points a game. Dylan Brooks having a great season, averaging 18 points a game. And people like Desmond Bain stepping up, score, scoring 16 points a game. Anthony Melton, Kyle Anderson. Just up and down our roster, this team is solid. Led by Taylor Jenkins, who is a pretty damn good coach in the league. If you match up John Moran with that elite defense, who knows like how far this team can go. This team is a very good team. They're still getting wins even without John, which is absolutely fantastic. And now that they finally found a defensive identity, I think this team is going to be like a problem going into the playoffs. There were some concerns early on, but now that they finally figured it, or they're finally figuring it out, it's going to be good. This is going to be definitely a good team. I mean, like I said, they were like 30th at the beginning of the season. They're jumping up to 18th, and that's going to continue to happen. They're still top five in offense. This is a good team, man. And there's a reason why I thought this team could possibly be sixth um, in the West, and they're showing it right here, right now. Next thing we're going to be talking about is the San Antonio Spurs. Right now sitting at a um, 10-16 and 16 record, number 12 in the West. And at least with them, we know that they should be tanking, and they are in a sense. But at least they're being competitive. At least they're being competitive. They won their last game against the Pelicans pretty handily. Um, but there's one guy I do want to talk about mostly here, and that's going to be DeJounte Murray. Right now averaging career highs across the board, 18 points per game, 8 assists, 8 rebounds. He is playing at an all-star level. If the Spurs were getting better, I think were, were, were better, he would be getting a lot more attention. But but this guy is just a good player. This guy is a very good player. This guy made all defensive team in the second rookie uh, in his in his rookie season, and now he's putting it together on the offensive end, which is absolutely fantastic. Getting help from people like Kelton Johnson, Derek White, Yaka Pertle, um, Devin Vassell, Lonnie Walker, D Doug McDermott. It's a solid team, and I think they are better than what their record suggests. But they're still competitive. They're still like fighting every single night. And the fact that DeJounte Murray looks like he could be a potential star in the future is great news for the Spurs. So good on them. Um, the only thing that's really sad is that um, after hearing the news that Steve Kerr is going to be taking over um, head coaching duties for Team USA in 2023 and 2024, leading me to believe that Pop's going to retire after this year, which is absolutely unfortunate. But this guy's had a long storied career. And now he's trying to help out the Spurs, trying to get the rebuild going. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, let's see if they can at least, you know, have Pop, like, pass Don Nesselton for most coach, um, co um, regular season coaching wins all time. Next thing I want to talk about is the Houston Rockets. And there's a lot, especially now, there's a lot to talk about them because they start off the season extremely badly. They were, they were like, after, I think, 16 or 17 games, they were, like, 1-16, 1-15. But after that 50-game losing streak, they went on a 7-8 game winning streak um, led by people like um, Eric Gordon, Christian Wood, Jay Sean Tate, and all of them. And they are a good team. I mean, they're not a good team, but they just are competitive. And I think a big change of that is moving Christian Wood from the power forward position to the same position, to removing Daniel Tice from the starting lineup, has helped tremendously. Because Christian Wood works best at the center position, and you can see that happening right now. But... The, the veterans that they had, the people from like um, their their um, Western Conference Final team a few years ago when Daniel House and Eric Gordon, they've been helping out a lot. And then like a veteran like DJ Augustine helping out as well. And all I got to say about the, about the Houston Rockets, like just moving forward, is that contenders, I think Eric Gordon is easy, can be traded for, um, definitely going to be out there in the market. DJ Augustine could be traded for. Daniel House could be traded for. 
these guys can help you like can help like bench depth for sure just depth on a team in general if i'm any of the contenders call up the houston rockets and they're they're still playing at a high level and i think they can help out a lot of teams who want to go far into the playoffs and also one report like, before i move on to the um to the um to the next team i know they've been doing a lot of this winning without jalen green but he is not the reason why, like him not playing is the reason why they're winning they finally made that change in the starting lineup which is a huge reason why they're playing so well do not blame Jalen Green. Do not blame Jalen Green. He is, he will come back, and I think that he can help contribute to the success. Does he have to take smarter shots? Yes, but I think they can. But I think he is going to help the team no matter what. Like when when he does come back. So, yeah, good change made from the Houston Rockets. Um, they should still be tanking. I think they can get some help for Jalen Green, but at least there's still some promise, especially with some of the young guys there, with Kevin Porter Jr., Christian Wood. There's a lot of um things um good things to see. Alperen Sengun too, one of my favorite rookies this year. Next team we want to talk about, two more teams left here in the NBA. Next team I want to talk about is the Dallas Mavericks. Currently sitting 7th in the West, 14-13 record. And for me, the best way to describe this team is that they are, a, they are a bad, good team. They got Luka Doncic, who's having a great season once again, 26 points a game, 8-8. Eight and eight. Porzingis playing pretty at a pretty high level, 20 points a game, 8 rebounds. And he's looked good so far this season. But as a, as a team as a whole, not a fan. Not a fan whatsoever. Luka Doncic, Doncic is a generational player. But looking around at the roster, his team is just not good enough. They need help in the big man position. They need some other shot creators around him. I mean, Jalen Brunson is good and decent, but they need some other ball handers to help out Luka. They need more shooting around him. And the thing that's concerning me most about this team is that under Rick Carlisle, they were constantly one of the best offenses in the league. Um, and right now, under Jason Kidd, it just hasn't looked like that. Their three-point percentage has been super down. It's like 33%, which is bottom six in the league. And their offense is in the bottom 10, which is, for me, pretty concerning. I still think that this team is going to make the playoffs for sure because Luka is that good. But the fact that they are kind of regressing and they basically have the same roster and kind of it's not really coming together right now is concerning. And I think they do are going to be one of those teams that do need to make a move in their trade deadline to help improve this team. So Dallas Mavericks... They are a good team, but they are a bad good team. And let's see if they're going to make some changes, <clears throat> especially like with the trade deadline coming up in the next two months. And the last thing I want to talk about um, on this podcast episode, I want to talk about the New Orleans Pelicans. <laughs> and man, did they have been in the news recently because as much as I want to talk about the team in general, they're bad. They are really bad. 8-21 record. Um, their best player, um, obviously, has been Brandon Ingram, but Jones Valanciunas have been playing well this season, 19-11. But the biggest news for them, and this is why I can't really even talk about this team, is because Zion Williamson is going to be out indefinitely. He's been, after his ankle surgery, he has to um, halt his um, rehab because he's feeling soreness in there. So they're trying to take a break on him. But more than that, I mean, obviously that's horrible. Absolutely, that's horrible. Him getting surgery before the season sucked. But news coming out now that he has been sleeping during um, film sessions. He hasn't been attending his rehab sessions as well. That's concerning, especially him being a number one pick. Him, we want to see him out on the floor. We see how great he is last year, being an all-star, averaging 27 points a game. It's just unfortunate for the New Orleans Pelicans. And I think because of what's going on right now, and kind of like them not being as good as the I think the organization wants them to be, David Griffin's on the hot seat. David Griffin is definitely on the hot seat because they're definitely not giving up on Zion right away, especially because they um, got they invested number one overall pick in him. It's going to be... It's kind of going to be like how the 76ers dealt with Embiid. They're going to believe in him until he basically he breaks down. But it's just that this team is already a wash for the Pelicans, and it really shouldn't be. This team this season should have been campaigning for a playing spot under nowhere close to that. Zion's going to probably miss the rest of the season if I had to go with my gut instinct. It just hasn't been good. It just hasn't been good, and I think that um, changes are going to have to be made, made especially at the front office level. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be even more, more changes to the roster going forward because they're definitely not giving up on Willie Green right away in this first season. David Griffin is going to be the, the scapegoat. And I think that with the moves that he has done so far um, as the New Orleans Pelicans executive, not good. Not good. And it's, it definitely does suck, especially for Pelicans fans, that Zion is going to, is definitely going through this. Character, pro I didn't think that Zion was going to have character problems, but it's definitely showing in, in the reports. We're still not sure if it's true or not. I don't want to completely believe it. But it just hasn't looked good. It just hasn't looked good for this team. And changes still have to be made. Hopefully he can come back next year. Maybe they can add another top pick to this team to help you know them contend in the future. But 
not good so far for the Pelicans, and it's it's highly unfortunate because you would expect them to be um, progressing, not regressing at this point in the rebuild. But yeah, all 30 teams discussed, um, both conferences discussed. Let me know down below your thoughts on any of this. This was a great episode. It was awesome to be back here. Great to talk some NBA basketball, and I'm glad to hopefully be doing this again, coming back every Tuesday, a new episode. And hopefully we have also um, guests coming on the show as well, coming in the future. But yeah, this is the end of today's episode. I want to thank you guys for watching and listening. Remember to show love on all the podcast channels. Like, share, and subscribe, subscribe if you're on YouTube. And remember to follow at TV on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm going to be back next Tuesday, hopefully with a guest to come on the podcast. And I just want to thank you guys for all the support you've been um, giving to me. And hopefully we can continue this grind, even going into the next school year. I'm going to try my best to monitor my time better, but I'm just excited to be back on the pod. But yeah, thank you guys for all the support. Hope you have a fantastic day. Take it easy, guys. TV signing out. Peace.